You can live forever. Yes, I am on drugs. However, just because I'm on something doesn't mean I'm wrong. I'm being completely serious. You yourself, you watching this, can become effectively immortal, even though you might regret it. It sounds like I'm going nuts, but there are very real sciences behind what I'm saying. And I'll start with the stuff that won't horrifically mangle you in the process. But don't worry, today we'll cover darker topics than what happens in your bathroom at 3 a.m. Yeah, I know what you do in there. It sounds like a senior citizen trying to clap in sync with the tempo of Mambo number no. 5. Sounds like whiplash in there. Have a little shame. But before I cover the fun, dark stuff, I'll cover the simple stuff. These things will help you live longer, have been proven by case studies, and are non-fatal. Hold up, were you gonna cover things that might be fatal? Yes. I'll cover them quickly since they're mostly common knowledge. Adequate sleep increases life expectancy by about five years. Eating healthier foods increases this by up to 10 years. Daily exercise increases this again by seven years. And keeping relaxed and unstressed increases this again by another three years. Meaning if you actually take care of yourself like a nerd, you could actually live another additional 25 years. But you'll be a nerd. So, you know, pick your poison. All right, enough boring stuff. We have some weird things to talk about. And after that, I'm gonna tell you how to not only extend your lifespan, but possibly become immortal. Right, Aunt Gertrude? <laughs> she breathes through a tube. Time for Slightly Experimental Sciences. They may work, they may hurt you, they may do nothing. We're not sure. All we know about these treatments is that they could extend your life. And that is it. Young blood transfusions. Yes, this means vampires were right all along. And this is why Brian Johnson looks like Vlad the Impaler. Young blood transfusions is the practice of getting blood donated from a compatible donor who is younger than the recipient. Gross? Yes. Kind of cool. Also, yes. Fulfills my dream of collecting children's blood. Apso tiddly widdly. Young blood transfusions have been shown to produce promising results in mice. It had a rejuvenating effect on the metabolic and cardiovascular systems, the heart, lungs, and food consumption systems, as well as muscles, brain functions, and aging brain symptoms. Overall, those test mice probably feel 20 years younger, with a strong disdain for garlic-related food products. Senolytics. No, I did not just have an embolism. Senolytics, or zombie cell killers, are a kind of drug which targets and eliminates senescent cells, aka zombie cells. I'm starting to see a theme here. First the vampires, now the zombies. Starting to sound like all our bodies need to live longer is the Hotel Transylvania movies, am I right? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! They're called zombie cells because they're neither dead nor alive. They function and are used within the body despite being extremely aged and can no longer divide, which, you know, cells are supposed to do that. This leads to big health problems in the future, which eventually likely leads to death. The whole point of senolytics is to cease the aging process on a cellular level. Kill the zombie cells and only leave room for the healthy cells that keep our bodies younger and avoiding those health problems. These are actually super cool. They're still in early development, so, you know, side effects are still an issue. But, you know, gold star to whoever thought that one up. Gonna, gonna give you a big chocolate cookie. The biggest chocolate cookie! Gene editing! No, Aunt Gertrude! No! Aunt Gertrude! Aunt Gertrude! Put away the sewing machine! CRISPR gene editing. Essentially, scientists can cut and modify your DNA to remove aging-related damage. This increased lifespan in animal trials up to 50% and increased lifespan up to 10 times in tiny worms 
called nematodes. There's also a variant of this called epigenetic gene editing. Basically, instead of cutting and editing genes, this method effectively resets the DNA to a younger state. Doesn't change them, just literally turns back the clock. Don't ask me how it works, because you won't get an answer, because I don't know. Harvard scientists have actually been able to use this DNA resetting method to literally fix a blind mouse. Like from Shrek. They fixed it. The mouse is no longer blind. As far as I'm concerned, they're no longer scientists. They're wizards. Poop transplants. Yes, I am talking about poop again. Poop, there it is. Poop, there it is. In a previous video, I talked about how poop might have caused World War I, and now it might be able to extend life itself. Once again, these test mice are putting in work. Studies have shown transferring young gut microbiomes to older subjects improves gut health, reverses age-related declines, and rejuvenates health span. There's even evidence showing improvement in brain function and inflammation. Poop can save your life. Never, ever, do you hear me? Never underestimate the power of poop. Poop, you're doing great. Cookie. <laughs> Okay, our final part. This is where things get a little nutty. These methods could work, but they're highly experimental and could kill you in the process. You know what else is highly experimental and could kill you? My nuts, dog! These methods will leave you mutilated beyond recognition. They are very experimental and likely need a lot more research. Cybernetic replacement. Becoming a Robotian Robotnik. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Have you ever seen Robocop? It's almost exactly the same thing. This method would slowly replace parts of your body with cybernetic upgradable parts. Transforming your body into a robot. Hmm. Transforming robots. It will likely be disgusting. However, we do have some very fascinating research into the subject. Let's dive in. With the Neuralink brain chip, or something similar from one of its competitors, people can now control electronics with their mind. Not only that, but a group of Italian scientists have actually built a hand moved by magnets, allowing amputees to control the hand simply by thinking. With technologies like these being developed, the limitations of classic prosthetics are slowly weaning out. But that's just for muscles and tendons. What about body parts that are a little more complex? When it comes to replacing organs, we've actually had some success, particularly in the heart. There have been mechanical hearts used in human patients that actually work pretty well. There were two kinds developed. The oldest was a soft artificial heart developed in 2017. It used 3D printed technology and mimicked the heart's form and function. Unfortunately, the little guy capped out at about 50 minutes of functioning in the lab. Aw, it's okay, buddy. We all have flaws. I floss every day. Do you want a cookie? However, the Australians seem to do everything better. An Australian biomedical engineer created another artificial heart just recently and has been successfully transplanted in a human patient in 2024. What does that sound like? It sounds like, that's not a hot. That's a hot. Meaning it's possible for body parts and organs to be replaced by artificial means. But what about those organs that can't be replaced? The ones we haven't developed yet? Actually, there is a new innovation in medicine that sort of remedies this problem. I mentioned it in my video about the limits of human strength. There are nanobots that exist and can administer drugs, attack specific bacteria or viruses, and even do minor repairs and have surgical applications. If this technology is properly used and develops even further, anyone who uses the cybernetic enhancement can not only be repaired by mechanics, but also have a superhuman healing factor as well. 
However, as you know, not all of these are foolproof. What about your brain? It's very possible, given enough time, your brain could deteriorate to a point where it's like mine. You don't want a brain like mine. Lucky for you, there is a solution. A possibly very deadly solution. Which is the best kind? We're not quite there yet, but some of the largest minds in the industry are working on downloading and uploading the human consciousness digitally. Meaning the matrix would be real and you could live on as long as the computer server that stores your brain stays intact. But that's where the problem comes in. While this method may be extremely effective, it's also the most dangerous. When putting your consciousness into a digital space, even if we could do it flawlessly, it proposes a big moral problem that I don't think people would be able to figure out the answer to. How do we on the outside know it's you in that computer? We could have just made an exact, exact copy. copy or some thing in there is pretending to be you while your consciousness rots away in a cold, decaying body. Or you go insane by being trapped inside a cold and unfeeling metal tin can. Unable to eat or sleep or feel the sweet release of death. But you know what else is a sweet release? Subscribing to my YouTube channel. Try it, it feels so good, I promise. If you like this video and want to see more like it, in this video over here, I threw morals out the window and created the most powerful human imaginable. This dog character you saw was another YouTuber, like me. I'll leave his channel below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the now.